Using your WPS at the same time as an intake pulse sensor could be a no-no. We'll see why. So if your testing has led you to the point where you're doing this, this style of testing where you're using pulse sensors and WPS or any sort of pressure transducers, I want to tell you about a little no-no that I've found um, that you may need to explore with your equipment to make sure that um, you don't send yourself down a rabbit hole. You'll see this video as it progresses what, what, what this is all about and how using these two sensors at the same time could give you some false readings. Um, the car in this video was a used car from the dealer I work for. It was a 21 Sentra uh, MR20. Uh, it's a four-cylinder. Uh, it had about 40,000 miles on it. I drove the car, got it up to operating temperature, did some scanning, uh, no misfires, fuel trims looked good, so I just kind of deemed this car as, um, you know, a good guinea pig to make this video. Um, I've seen some files on Facebook, and I get sent a lot of files, which I'm grateful for. I appreciate you guys, uh, you know, considering my input on a, diagno a diagnosis that you may be working on. Um, as I'll state later in the video, I'm all for trying to get maximum information. But I believe, and you'll see, that I believe these two tests should be done separately. Um, when I get files that have pulse sensors and WPSs at the same time, um, I, I disregard the file. Uh, I, I look at it, um, but uh, there can be some rabbit holes in there. So that's what this video is all about. And um, also... Trevor's got new swag up on the Auto Nerds store. Um, hoodies. Uh, I do need to get me a new hat. This one does not have the flex fit. Uh, it's a little tight in the back. I think my head must be getting bigger. Uh, fender covers. I do have two fender covers. Uh, they work really good. Uh, sweatshirts, zip up, pullovers, coffee mugs. All that stuff's on there now. I was checking it out the other day. Also, uh, he's put a note on the front page about some issues not getting scopes right now until the middle of uh, or into January but uh, feel free to call if you have any questions about any sort of inventory for something you want to you want to get you may have to put your name on a list um, Lord only knows what's going on supply chain issues who knows but for all your scope needs uh hit the link in my description box for auto nerds uh those guys are there they're ready to answer your calls uh, i try to answer questions on facebook but when it gets right down into the nitty-gritty and specs and performance and this and that rather than tell you something wrong i would just refer you to uh those guys they uh you know that's their forte that's their wheelhouse and Trevor can rattle off numbers and specifications about these scopes way faster than I can and uh, probably with more accuracy. So enjoy the video. Um, just remember, use your equipment and test. It may give you different results than my equipment, but at least this is going to be brought to the forefront um, so you don't get yourself into a situation where you're doing this style of testing you're really looking for something hard to find and usually by the time you get to this point you're looking mechanical and it could get expensive and very time consuming so don't let this fool you into something you really don't need to be doing enjoy the video thanks for liking and subscribing and we will see you guys in 2024 all right for this experiment i've got a sink on number one i've got a homemade pulse sensor in a purge port right here centered in the intake kind of down there i don't know if you can see it and i'm grounded to battery negative um, i do have a first look sensor back there in the exhaust pipe uh, this is no wps so this is going to be our control 
21 Sentra, 40,000 miles, no problems. So this is the capture with no WPS in the cylinder. The green is the first look sensor in the exhaust. The red is the homemade pulse sensor in the intake. And the blue, which I'll turn on in a minute, is a uh, sync on number one. So I just want you guys to notice that on my properties window here, I've got everything exactly the same on both captures. So two microseconds, um, channel A, which you don't see, has a filter on it. That's the sync. Channel B, which is the red, that's the one we're going to focus on. It is a 50 hertz filter on it. Um, and notice the time. It was uh, 1226 at 304 p.m. Uh, as I told you in the beginning, the car was uh, fully warm. And uh, I tried to do this test exactly uh, the same. You know, I wanted to compare apples to apples or at least as close as I could do it. Um, and, and keep it to, to kind of get across the point I'm trying to make. Um, I'm on five times zoom. And the reason I'm showing you all this is, is because the next capture you see is going to be set up the exact same way. So here at the very beginning is where the car starts cranking. Um, I'm at one second per division, so this thing cranks for 10 seconds. You can take a quick peek at the exhaust pulls and pushes. Um, it, it is the same all the way across. Uh, I see no anomalies in this capture or the, the next capture I'm going to show you. Where I see the biggest discrepancy, and the reason I'm doing this video, is you'll notice down here. Now this is what we're going to call the good capture. And just kind of keep an eye on the bottom here. Everything is pretty even. I mean, every now and then you get a, a little, uh, a low one we'll call it. and But it doesn't repeat. When I'm doing this sort of testing, especially looking at with pulse sensors, I'm looking for something that repeats. Uh, not a one-off anomaly. Uh, that could be a vibration. You know, valves do turn as they go up and down. I'm looking for something that really repeats, something I can really put my hand on and say, yep, that problem there is worth exploring. So I'm just going to scroll through this whole capture and and just just keep an eye on this bottom right here i mean look at the top look look at the whole pulse here but um this is where the issue is going to be like i said this is good so i don't expect any issues in here at all and let me go ahead and turn the sink on this is number one so every time number one fires you know we have one revolution or two revolutions of the crankshaft so I'm looking at all four intake pulls and all four pushes between coil turn-ons. And all in all, this looks good to me. Um, there's nothing wrong with this car. But I'm showing you this to, uh, to kind of show you the good. And this is what the... If I take all the zoom out, this is what the capture looks like from start to finish. It's 10 seconds of straight cranking. And like I said, I just came up here, typed in the number five, hit enter. And that's got my five times zoom. Um, if I take the filter off, that's my homemade pulse sensor. Um, it's, it's a little dirty, but like I said, I got about six bucks in making this thing. So it does require a little filter. The store-bought one up here has no filter on it. It's um, it's really smooth. And then, of course, uh, if I turn the filter off of the sink pulse, you can really tell the engine was cranking. You get a lot of noise. So I'm going to show you another video of the next setup, and we'll go over the next capture. Then I'll flip back and forth, and then uh, we'll really kind of show you this no-no that uh, I'm getting at. Hang on. All right, here's my second setup. Still in the same port same sensor now this time I have a WPS in the uh, in number one and I'm also looking at mass airflow that's another experiment that I've got going on um, not really for this video and I still have the sensor in the tailpipe and uh, you'll see the differences when I go over the file 
Okay, so this is what we're going to call the bad capture, although it's not bad, but we're proving a point here. So back to this. Same setup, one second per division. I'm on zoom level five, uh, two microseconds. I still have the exact same filter on the um, intake sensor. And here's the very beginning of the capture. And you can already kind of tell as I'm coming through there's a high one one two three oh, there's a high one you, you see what I'm getting out here this is a repeating this is stuff that I personally look for when I'm doing this sort of testing um, there's a high one there and you can see it's every fourth so approximately 13 minutes went by from the good to the bad. So what did I do in 13 minutes to create this? Uh, notice the exhaust still looks fine. No real anomalies there, so... But it's pretty obvious that something's going on with this. And all I did, which you guys already know this, is all I did was put a WPS in the cylinder. This WPS is in number one cylinder, and that is creating what appears to be an issue on number four. That's number one's companion cylinder. It's one, three, four, two is the firing order. Now I have theories on why this happens, and I think it has to do with crankshaft speed and the added volume to number one because of the hose. Um, I haven't set out to prove that 100%, but what I do know is to me, this is a false reading. I would chase this. If, if I knew for a fact this WPS was not in this cylinder and I saw this, I would chase that. I would go looking for some sort of a pull issue on number four. Um, it's really, really obvious so this is the no-no. Um, obviously, I'm not here to tell you guys how to do your testing. I'm just going to show you something that I've seen over and over and over again, whether it's V6s or V8s, the WPS changes the pulse sensor, or at least it changes mine. Um, and I keep saying WPS. That's the only pressure transducer I have. I can't speak for all the pressure transducers in the world. All I know, what I will say, is if you have pulse sensors and you have transducers, try it. Get the information for yourself. See how your particular setup reacts with one another. Mine reacts in a way that could send me down a rabbit hole. So I am all for using all four channels, getting the maximum amount of information as possible. I'm also for getting the maximum amount of in information that is accurate as possible. To me, this is not accurate. So I would do these two tests separately. So I'm just gonna do this real quick. I'm gonna put this on the 1.5 second mark and we can look through here and we can see a high one through the whole thing and I'll just pop the other one back up and um, we'll go back to the one point roughly like I said same car roughly 13 minutes apart this is the ignition sink everything's smooth this is the WPS up 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 so beware of this um if your data has led you to, to doing this style of testing i would recommend you do this testing separately um, for this very reason now if you're comparing number one's intake pull on the pulse sensor to number one's wps capture I think you're fine, but if you're comparing pull to pull to pull to pull, this added volume 
which I do believe is slowing the crankshaft down some, is what's killing its companion cylinder. I do believe it all has to do with engine speed because of the way pulse sensors read. They react heavily to speed, uh, speed of change. Um, but I, I haven't fully uh, proved that, but that, that, that is my thought. So hope you enjoy this little presentation. Um, I, I get sent files, and a lot of times I'll get a file and I'll open it, and it'll look just like this. And I simply close out the file and email back, hey, can you do the test over without the WPS? Or with the WPS and without the pulse sensors? Um, because I've seen this many, many, many times. So use the information for what it's worth. And um, happy testing and good luck in the new year, guys. Alright, bonus footage because I know it's going to come up. How do I know that's number four, that's the low one, and um, how can I use this if I've already taken the capture? So let's go over that real quick. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag out a couple of cursors. Let's zoom in on this a little more. We've already determined that using the WPS at the same time as a pulse sensor may be a no-no. But I've got the capture, but what can I glean from it? So let's just drag our ruler back down to here. Okay, so if this is number one, it's up on compression. So you can do it a couple of ways. You could come down on power, up on exhaust. So this is number one's exhaust push. It's to the left of 360, one pump. And this is number one's intake right here. And you can kind of see that. This is where it intake pulls here, and here's its pull. So if we determine this is one's intake, we just go by the firing order. One, three, four, two, and then it repeats. So there's number four. Number one's, number one's WPS is affecting number four. And if I were to take this WPS and put in number four, it would affect number one. Um, where this could lead you down the hole is let's say number four cylinder is under the intake and you were really you know you found this and you're like dang on something's wrong with four well now you got to pull the intake off to get your wps in that cylinder and you have just wasted a lot of time so as you can see by not having the wps all the pulls were even um i'll do this real real quick let me zoom way in on this capture this car at idle, the intake valve doesn't, at idle or cranking, this intake valve doesn't open until well after top dead center. And you can kind of see the pistons moving downwards. If you look at the cam card on this motor, it's an MR20, um, the intake valve at cranking it does not open until 37 degrees after top dead center so basically the pistons going down and it's pulling the cylinder back into a vacuum and the valve actually doesn't open until it starts shooting back upwards and it's kind of neat you can see that right there in the first look sensor so when the gold trace goes starts up that's the valve opening at the same time the pulse sensor is seeing it pull down the way mine are oriented vacuum it goes down pressure it goes up so that aspect of testing it at the same time is good it's just when you compare pull to pull to pull is when you're going to find yourself uh, in a no-no so hope you enjoyed the little bonus feature i figured there would be some questions on that um, so there again have a great new year, and we will look forward to doing more videos. Have a good one.